Right. I would like to introduce our next presenter is Ralph Spencer Steenblick. Uh, Ralph is a graduate student at the Southern California Institute of Architecture, and his thesis work is in neuromorphic architecture as well as compact urbanism. Thank you very much for being here. Thanks. I really appreciated the words of the last speaker. Very interesting thoughts. Um, uh, urban citizens of the 20th century were adept at describing the, in great detail how to positively influence the progress of urban living and of the city. But it is up to the urban dwellers of the 21st century to translate these ideas into reality. In the closing remarks of his essay, Lightness, Italio Calvino makes an interesting point. We shall face the new millennium without hoping to find anything more than we ourselves are able to bring to it. This is a, an image of the assembly line, which is indicative of the 20th century. Um, we got really good at, at creating replicas of the exact same thing. Assembly line manufacturing became a, a way of life for us. And, and today we live in that world where, where we can replicate anything at low cost in mass quantities. But I submit that there's a need to move beyond, beyond the assembly line productivity of the 20th century into an ecosystem mentality in the 21st century. This is a diagram showing the um, power consumption of a city in Abu Dhabi, uh, the first zero carbon emission city in the world, uh, covered by the New York Times recently. They're, they're breaking ground on this city this year. This, this shows the way that uh, the city utilizes energy, but not just utilizes it, but uses the waste product of the energy uh, production as a resource for other systems. If we take these, these ideas and translate them into our societal norms, make them a part of who we are and what we do as a society, it becomes very powerful. You know, we talk of sustainability, the ability to um, minimize our carbon footprint and tread lightly on the earth. It's not a matter of that. The, the more important thing to consider is making our waste products into a resource for other um, other systems, other entities, other companies. And, and that's where we become truly sustainable. Um, we can tread as lightly as we want, but we're still going to have a waste product. But if we can make our waste products into, into a resource for others, then they become highly, highly efficient systems that, that are then, like I said, truly sustainable. So how do we accomplish this? This is a, an image of a swarm. And all, many of you know of swarm theory, the idea of uh, organization, uh, of decentralized organization and spontaneous organization, as I said. Uh, to, so the way that we're able to to move towards a model of, of decentralized organization is through our ability to, to act as, a, as a, a whole, as an entity, not as individuals, but as, as a, a conglomerate, a unit together. So I submit to you, what is, what is transhumanism? Many people would tell us that transhumanism, as, as some of the slides of previous presenters, a strange conglomerate of, of, of people and machine. But I submit to you that, that it is superorganism, the superorganism of the human family. And through organization strategies such as these, we, as a swarm, we are able to move towards uh, transcending our abilities as individuals and becoming what we can as a superorganism. So we look at these as a dynamic system. As um, we look at this as a dynamic system, as a way to uh, relate to each other in flow, in motion. 
Uh, and I, I, I'd like I bring this these slides of of atomic motion and of solar radiation to uh, help us understand or to to bring to mind the ideas of dynamics or of motion in time and space, and then harnessing that motion for uh, the greater good of the whole. Let's look at uh, this more in depth. I would, I would say that um, many of the theorists of swarm theory, of chaos theory, tell us that we, all of the things that we need in order to act in uh, dynamic groups, self-organized, decentralized groups, is, are in place except for one thing. And that's a, a common value system. Postmodernism broke down the hierarchies of society, put, made it so that we no longer have um, value systems in society are no longer valued, essentially. And that's a good thing because it brings, brings up the minority, brings the minority group to, to the center of, of society and gives them a, an equal playing field with uh, the majority, right? But at the same time, it destroyed all those value systems that, that were inherent with the hierarchy that was present. So um, with that issue at hand, I'd like to, to move towards something um, that I feel is a solution to that problem. Here you see mission control. And that my solution to this problem deals with this, this idea. The idea is that um, that self-organization must happen with lo localized, synergistic, value-based groups. Self-selection is key, and a value-based uh, so organization is key. So with, with the postmodern society and values being devalued, there, that becomes an issue. So there's a ne necessity to reinvigorate society with value systems to recognize the value systems that we currently have, capitalize on those systems, and move forward as self-selecting groups that, that adhere to these value systems. So not one group is necessarily uh, more important than the other, but, but those people who have the common, common value systems need, need to be able to self-organize uh, to make these decentralized organization systems possible. You see this, an example of this uh, in chat forms, you know, like Twitter groups and, and um, you know, all, all these types of medias. But I, f I think that those are, are um, passive approaches at, at, at self-organization. To me, this mission control situation uh, becomes a type because the way to, or to get these self-organized groups is to make them mission critical. And the way that you can make a mission critical situation is through that value system. The value system drives the, the criticality of the mission. And therefore, these self-organized entities will then have a trajectory. So the value system is, is critical. Once you identify the value system, then you're able to move forward with it. So let's look at um, something that I have coined, positive parametricism. And I'm going to tear, tear apart this, this term and just dissect it for a second. Positive, coming from the uh, prefix of po positive uh, psychology, uh, dealing with the move away from diagnosis or focus on the negative uh, psychological situations in the world, but moving towards embracing and understanding the, the positive psychological emotions that we have in our life, diagnosing those, learning how to, to understand them, learning how to enhance them, and moving towards an assertive uh, study instead of a regressive or um, a, a, a study that, that's reactive. So, and then the second term, po uh, parametricism. Okay, wait, excuse me. So, so let's look at um, Abraham Maslow, who originally called psychology to this, this move of positive psychology, forgotten for many years, and then Seligman, Marty Seligman, reintroduced the idea later. Um, uh, Abraham 
Maslow said, let, uh, let us as a psycho psychological uh, group move up the, the hierarchy to self-actualization, but let's do it within our profession. Let's actual, actualize the profession of uh, psychology and move to a positive psychology, and that's where Marty Seligman came in. And we see this being proliferated in business schools and all sorts of, the, all, all sorts of different uh, societies and disciplines and organizations in the world, this, this positive uh, adaptation to things and, and applying the, uh, an assertive mechanism as opposed to a regressive or a regressive situation. Now let's look at parametricism. It's a really pixelated image, but um, this is Patrick Schumacher on the, on the left and Zaha Hadid on the right. Both architects, uh, Zaha Hadid is, uh, is British and of Arabian royalty, and Patrick Schumacher is her lead architect. And, he, and they're involved in um, something that I call, uh, they, they, they call parametricism. And parametricism is um, parameter-based design. So it's looking at um, using the parameter or using parametric modeling to create opportunities. Five minutes? OK. To create, uh, create different solutions for one design problem, and then taking uh, the best of those solutions from their parametric modeling, and then, um, and then moving forward with that. So let's look at positive parametricism. Uh, well, actually, so. Uh, Patrick Schumacher, he states parametricism is a style. And I submit that there is deeper principles that are able to be applied than just a style. And let's look at that. So here is um, a basic breakdown of hierarchies of different, of the way that people organize their belief systems. And I say that, um, that let's move away from the style back to the ideological level, and let's analyze that. So here we see uh, parametricism, positive parametricism broken down into parametricism, which, which is what Patrick Schumacher um, brings forward, uh, value-based spontaneous organization, or positivity, which is a Maslownian principle. And we get th some basic principles for positive parametricism. Dynamics, dynamics become key, important, fundamental. And, and let's look at some examples of that. Here we have a a, an example of a dynamic model. Uh, this is a, a model from Cohen, Pedersen, and Fox, where they looked at, this is uh, ultimately the design of a, a train terminal, but they're looking at sun patterns and using these points of reference to, you, to do dynamic modeling with it. Here are some examples of my own, some screenshots from, from some particle um, dynamics modeling that I used as a form finding generator for um, some architectural projects that I've been, I work on. Now let's look at holistic, the holistic nature of positive parametricism. There's a need, well let's see here, um, within, within the mind there are four different, different uh, portions. There's memory, perception, thought, and action. So um, these tenets of positive parametricism fall into those four categories and are holistic in that way. And the holistic, um, holistic portion of positive parametricism is, is the need to, uh, to address memory, to look at the broader scope of things, to look at the, um, the minorities as well as the majorities, have them represented, and come together in um, uh, multidisciplinary groups to solve problems. Then lastly is, um, is collaborative. Before we move on to collaborative, let's go into holistic for, for a quick second. The title of my speech was uh, Positive Parametricism and, and Phenomenology. Phenomenology is a study in architecture of the metaphysical properties of space. So here are some quick examples or a quick run through uh, throughout history of this 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 uh, pheno phenomenon. So here we have Nero with the Domus Aurea, Ar Aria, and he used his palace as a, as a tool for um, exploring spaces, for understanding different spaces, 
and as a laboratory for spaces. The humanists did the same thing. They, they tried to create the perfect human space, and they were fairly successful at it. Not, not perfect, but fairly successful. Next, we have um, the Nuremberg Rally, and they cre he, uh, the architect there created a virtual space with the spotlights. People said that it was uh, a very emotionally moving event, and part of that had to do with the space that they were dwelling in. Richard Neutra, he would, um, he would diagnose his clients and then prescribe architecture for them. We have uh, Christopher Alexander getting into to the dynamics of cities and how, um, how, how metaphysics and, and the city co correlate. And then we have dynamic modeling in today's world through many, many examples. And then, so, and then lastly, we have collaborative, the collaborative nature of, of positive parametricism. These three principles together applied give us the opportunity to move forward as a race, as a superorganism, becoming, transcending our, our abilities and um, our humanity towards a, a superhumanality or a transhumanism, as I would say. And through... A, a, a positive parametricism, I feel that we'll be able to get there and that we as, as self-organizing groups will be able to better tackle, better tackle the problems that face the world today. Thank you.